Hey guys, welcome back to the Coding Corner Podcast. This week we talked to Leva Kiwi, who you guys might have seen before because he made a very interesting video about his experience using Duolingo to learn Japanese for over three years. Before we get started, make sure the like button isn't there anymore, but hope you guys enjoy the conversation. All right, so Leva Kiwi, can you give us a quick background of who you are and where you're at today? Okay, sure. So I am Leva Kiwi and... I have a YouTube channel of an age of about one year. Um, at least the first video was uploaded a year ago. And I guess I have about 20K subscribers. And I may mostly make videos about, you know, all kinds of stuff. A lot of, such as uh, learning Japanese and, you know, some programming stuff and other ideas that I've had. So I don't have like a pigeon pigeonhole for making Japanese videos. So I'm not only fixated on making Japanese videos, but I also make, you know, art videos sometimes, but Japanese seems to be the main thing people come to my channel for so far. So, so how long have you been studying Japanese? Well, um, until now, I guess right now it's been three years and exactly two months. It's uh, the 5th of December today, so it's been exactly two months and three years. So I started in 2018 on the 5th of October, so... Yeah, a lot of people probably know you because you made a video about uh, your experience like using Duolingo for a really long time. So oh, yeah. can you talk about like your uh, maybe your methodology when you started learning Japanese and how that evolved? Okay, so... Basically, I just, I was learning Russian at first, like I had been learning Russian in school, but I started learning Russian on my own because that just sounded fun for some reason. And I checked out Duolingo, like when I started learning Russian, I started doing it on Duolingo because, you know, back then it was like the new thing. Duolingo was the new thing for learning languages on your own. And I actually found it kind of enjoyable in the sense that I had a pretty bad experience with learning Russian in school before that, but Duolingo felt like, like, it felt different. It didn't feel like I, like, as boring and as tedious as it was to learn Russian in school, and I didn't have the same kind of pressure. So I felt like I was actually learning something, and it take, took very little effort compared to school. So I was learning Russian for maybe a hundred days uh, straight. Then I quit for a while, then I came back, and I actually started using Anki for Russian as well. And that lasted for around 40 days. And before I quit learning Russian, I actually started learning Japanese at the same time. I mostly just checked it out. I wasn't going to be serious about it. I was just like, you know, my friend was learning Russian at the same time. I mean, learning Japanese at the same time as I was learning Russian. So I actually kind of knew what learning... Japanese looked like and it kind of seemed pretty fun in the sense that I was pretty interested in learning languages that do not have the same writing system or the alphabet as you know English or Estonian I don't know why but it just kind of seemed cool so I started out on Duolingo and just kind of went from there and it was pretty fun so I decided that I'm going to continue and so about two weeks into using only Duolingo, I decided that I'm going to get more serious about learning Japanese. So I also started using Anki with the Core 2K6K deck, which I mention on my videos a lot, which is basically just a deck that has like 6,000 words in it, like common words. So that's pretty much it. I pretty much used Duolingo and the Core 2K6K deck for a really long time for a little over two years, I think. And mm -hmm. actually, the Duolingo video, which I made, <laughs> it's um, it's kind of funny that it got so big. I didn't expect it to get so big, but I suppose it kind of hit well with the alg algorithm because, you know, it has Duolingo in it and a good thumbnail and a really angry-sounding title. So <laughs> it kind of got picked up. Now, I guess now I'm the Duolingo guy, which is kind of, I don't know. But so with Duolingo, my experience was that I think it's all right for starting out because it's like when you start out, you're not, you're most likely not as serious as 
someone who has already been learning for a hundred days. You just you're just thinking about getting started, so you don't even know what's what it's like to learn a language. So I think it's a nice way to you know get the ball rolling and get started. But overall, I think it really loses efficiency or and effectiveness. And so the reason why I used it for 800 days was because I just wanted to stay consistent. I didn't really want to quit because um, first of all, if I would quit, then one method of learning would disappear that I already had been doing for, for so long that I had a long streak in. But the other reason was also that I was going to quit already but then they updated the course and then they updated the course again. Like they made it longer two times. I mean, they made it like two separate occasions where they made the course longer. So I kept on doing it really slowly. I actually didn't spend a lot of time in it. I only did like one lesson a day. So it took really long. So I just let it, let my straight go do something like over 800 days. And a part of this was also because I actually knew that I was, I wanted to make a video on reviewing it. So like, mm -hmm. I was like already like 600 days in and I was like, okay, I'm going to make a video reviewing Duolingo. So I'm just going to gather dots and stuff like that for making a video. So that's one of the reasons why it got much longer than maybe if I mm -hmm. like, if I wasn't going to make the video, then maybe I wouldn't have used it for so long, but I think it's still fair. like. I still used it, so. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Like one of the motivations is yeah, definitely maybe to share your experience with the community. I guess yeah. like maybe because like a lot of people when they learn Japanese, they also do like a, a like people we talk to, they do like a one year update or three year update. So that, yeah. that that's probably like a like a motivator too. Like oh, I'm so close, I can't give up right now. I gotta make my three year update for the community. Yeah, definitely. But, um, like, how, how would you say that Duolingo is uh, friendly for beginners? Because we, we've actually tried um, using Duolingo just uh, for a video, but we found that, like, the, the method that they basically use is, like, um, having you guess what the answer is, and then you kind of just remember what the, um, like, you kind of just remember what the, what the correct answer should be. But, like, what, what's been your experience? Do you feel like it was, it was a good method in terms of getting the basics? Well... Okay, so one thing is that um, Duolingo has changed since I first used it like as a beginner. So it's still mostly the same, but it has changed a bit in the sense that, for example, when I was doing Russian with it, then I was mostly just typing with my keyboard. And it didn't really have the word bank. Yeah, it didn't have the word back, bank back then, but now they, at least on the mobile version, they force you to use it and stuff like that. So I think... My main reasoning is not actually whether or not Duolingo is effective in the beginning, like for learning, but rather than it's effective for you to keep on learning. Depends on the person, of course. For example, I know people who do, do Duolingo for the first time and they want to rage quit on the first lesson. I think it's usually when you already have some experience with the language and... Um, you like Duolingo likes to give you the wrong answer even if you if you write like if you write something correct and it just corrects you because you didn't write it the same yeah. way and so essentially I think for me it was that I came from learning Russian in school or you know English so yeah. compared to that it was like much better however you know I think I don't recommend Duolingo for the sake of Duolingo. I just recommend Duolingo for starting out for the sake that it's just so easy to... There's no, there's not a lot of friction between you getting started and setting up software and having to learn how to use anything. So it's just like... Yeah. If somebody says that they have been thinking about learning, I don't know, German, for example, I ju I'll just say that, well, if you're thinking about it, you can just try out... German on Duolingo and see if you can stick with it and if you don't like Duolingo then you can try something else if you like it you can stick with it but over time you should probably get more serious with it and try some other methods as well like at the same time or just move on right and so how long were you using Duolingo every day for because like on the when you sign up it's like um, five minutes a day is like the normal and if you're like 
if you say you're hardcore, it was like 15 yeah. minutes a day. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's like they have those, or at least they used to have those XP formats where like 50 XP is um, the hardcore version, which is. Um, yeah. It, th they changed how that. <laughs> yeah, hardcore. They they changed how those things worked as well, but it's like, for me, it was, I think, I used to do. Well, okay, I used to do quote unquote 50 XP per day, which is. Uh, five lessons which means that you start a lesson and finish a lesson five times so not five skills but five you know lessons like where you have to mm. go from begin to the start to the end so I, which, which translates anywhere from between I think 15 to 50 minutes per day in the beginning mm. because I I do remember how so when I was using the keyboard and doing those uh, uh, try not to make three mistakes challenges and stuff, I kept failing those sometimes. So I had to do it again and and all over again. And so those took a lot of time sometimes. But honestly, for the most part, for like after I finished the course, I, I don't remember exactly how uh, when I finished the course for the first time. Like I gilded the entire tree in the first version of the. Japanese tree so I used it for after that I started using the Japanese to English tree for a while which is like the Duolingo version for Japanese speakers that want to learn English so but I only did like not the hardcore 50 XP per day but the 10 XP per day so only one lesson so something like I don't know 2 to 10 minutes a day I suppose for Mm. the rest of the time pretty much sometimes took longer but usually it was pretty fast so in total i think i spent around i think less than 100 hours on duolingo in total i think i assume it was something around 70 to 70 to 100 hours i think is my total play time so to speak on duolingo i see so how would you rate like um, the vocabulary they teach you and how much it like helps with comprehending real media, um, even after three years? I honestly think that, I mean, the vocabulary, the vocabulary itself in Japanese seems to be fine because they're pretty common words. Um, I mm. feel like, okay, if I, if I try to recall what words they taught on Duolingo, I remember one of them like the hard words so to speak were like lawyer and jail or like prison and stuff like that which thinking back don't seem hard at all in the sense that they're so common words that once you get to a certain level they're just you know basic words but at the time they felt like what why do, why do i need to learn this like when when am i when when am i am i ever going to hear the word lawyer when i'm still like a kind of a noob so I think the vocabulary is fine, but the issue just is that I think Duolingo is pretty bad for learning vocabulary, actually, besides, you know, like the basics. So for me, I did the uh, Anki Core 2K 6K deck at the same time. So most of my vocabulary actually just came from that. And Duolingo was more like just a supplement that I don't know how many words I learned from because, you know, I learned the same words with Anki at the same time. But I think the main benefit of Duolingo is just they kind of make you do those output exercises and those which <laughs> i don't know to be honest i my the main thing i like about duolingo is using it for learning hiragana and katakana when you get started but after that mm -hmm. like when you finish those which take like one day or two right. you, then it's like you decide whether or not you want to continue or switch to something else so i actually remember like the first days where i used it i do remember like reading the notes about the particles and stuff like that so they do have like those uh, grammar notes and stuff where they teach you about the wa and ga and o particles and so on and then the comment section also had a lot of information so basically people correcting or giving additional information that duolingo didn't give so i think those things were pretty helpful but overall I wouldn't say Duolingo is good, I just, um, for learning overall, 
but I think it's you know okay for getting started like the first few weeks to a month or so. I see. Can't wait for the four year update video, <laughs> the, <laughs> the classic waiting for the or having the community wait for the next big thing, which I mean, I feel like in a way is kind of a, a blessing and a curse in terms of you have motivation to do it, but sometimes it could also act as pressure but <laughs> yeah I mean. it's like it's like uh, like the first video was like okay we're, we're now getting started after 600 days and then the three year one was like i was hoping that this is going like i can make an update video that this is going to be the last update video but <laughs> like obviously not now it's like okay the three year update video are you fluent yet not really okay so the four year update video are you fluent yet oh no not really so is it just going to keep going like that forever? But like, there, like, will there ever be some last update video or something? Uh, I'm not really sure, but probably actually, in the sense that, um, like, did I ever stop learning English? I mean, technically no, but in a way, yes, in the sense that even the last two years or something in school, when I, when I was learning English, like, even the class contents really didn't, feel really challenging the only thing i remember learning was i used to make this mistake without english output was which was um instead of saying for example i used to say for an example which is uh, which is correct in a specific context but usually i was like using it wrong so this is that's the only thing i remember that i learned uh, and i guess the teacher just let me not go to the class for the last one year but I think now is a good time for the classic message at the end of every episode. The one that everyone comes on the show for. And Liv Akivi, I, I know it's been really, this has been on your mind for a couple of years. As soon as you made that first update video, you're like, oh, what do I say for the Korakata message to the <laughs> Korakata squad when I come on? So now is the time. You've had all the time to think about it. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. What is your message to the Korakata squad? Okay, so no matter what you're learning, be it Japanese, be it programming or anything else. Um, okay, I didn't think this far, but... <laughs> you, were, you were there like all those years back. You're like, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> That's it right there. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I think the main thing that I suppose can help most people is that you don't have to go all in all the time like learning to be consistent even if you do something for 15 minutes a day goes a really long way like um, a lot of people it's really easy to say that you can just oh you know you should just age at all the time you just watch anime 10 hours a day do Anki for three hours and you know listen to podcasts while you're sleeping but I think uh, a lot of people don't realize that most people are really busy in the sense that they're full, working full-time jobs and not like all their weekends and some and stuff like that and nights are free either so if you can just start by doing something 15 minutes a day um, even five minutes five to 15 minutes start working up from there but don't move the goalpost in the sense that if you start feeling burnt out you don't need to quit but you can just you know uh, reduce the volume of what you're doing but just keep on going in the sense that even with 15 minutes a day it's like for in 10 days that's 150 minutes so if you didn't do anything that's already over two and a nearly two and a half hours that you can you know if you put two and a half hours into learning programming every week so it's going to st stack up over time you know that's something like a hundred hours a year or something right so yeah that's it pretty much just stay consistent and do something instead of you know burning yourself out and just build up from there right you love to hear it 15 minutes a day keeps the doctor away <laughs> <laughs> hey guys thanks for being here to the end of the podcast really enjoy talking to Liva Kiri and his experience using doing to learn Japanese but Raza but comment down below if you've ever used Duolingo before oh no com com <laughs> comment down below if you use 
comment down below if you use Duolingo to learn hiragana and katakana. <laughs> bit embarrassing admission. <laughs> hey, we, we don't judge over you. But of course, as always, gotta shout out the patrons supporting the Korekara podcast. Hopefully, we get some members getting shouted out over here as well. But we got Kevin Cedric, Alan Jonathan Faraz, Britt Bridge, Van Quaid, Alan Card Cage, Nani Drew, Jack, you and <laughs> Sad Boy. Nice. Nice. Easy, so. <laughs> Peace.